Right, so here we have the second episode of Season 2, whose plot involves some interesting deforestation devices, a very oddly made and pretty terrible restaurant, and a plot which could easily have destroyed a man's marriage. This is Path of Destruction. Quite literally. Essentially, the centre of the story revolves around what I can only describe as Sidewinder 2.0 from Pit of Peril. It's basically this machine called the Crab Logger, which is this massive lumber device, I get a lumber factory on wheels, that goes around ripping up trees, eating them, devouring them, and shitting out lumber. Either that or it's like a, some kind of lumber pulp or something. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, um, the designers and, um, you know, um, drivers of this crab logger dine out in this South American restaurant, which has no menu, which is... Some Probably the weirdest thing we've ever seen with, with regards to a culinary business. Mm, and on top of that, the business isn't exactly booming. There's one guy mm. on, in there who's passed out from excessive alcohol consumption, and the food is um, quite terrible. There are actual rats, as you can see, in the kitchen whenever it pans across the tables. I mean, I was horribly reminded of school dinners, because that's the only place I've ever been which was like a restaurant but had no menu. And the chef, which is a um, South American version of the Bastard of Crichton Ward, serves up a so-called special to the um, crew of the Crab Locker, which ends up giving them very bad food poisoning and leaving them passing out inside the Crab Locker. And of course, with nobody to keep an eye on the remote-controlled machine, it ventures outwards and starts heading towards not only several towns, but a massive dam which, if compromised, will completely wipe out even more towns and destroy thousands of lives. So this was Jerry Anderson's very elaborate and very action-packed and thrilling, adventurous way of telling kids never to eat at a restaurant that has no menu. Always do some checks first, which I'm sure we can do now in the future. Yeah, go on to fucking... I don't know. Eat or something. Yeah, or eat. Trip Just advisor. eat. Yeah, TripAdvisor. <laughs> is there a TripAdvisor for restaurants? I can't remember. I'm sure there is. Yeah. <laughs> Look at online reviews before you eat with places, because, you know, it might cost thousands of lives. Yes, in the case of uh, International Rescue, who don't actually come in until about about 20 minutes in or so, but they, uh, they just get in straight forward. Uh, immediately, uh, Scott and Virgil are dispatched, and Brains goes to, because he's the one needed to shut down the reactor to this uh, crab logger, because the only way to stop it, because supposedly it's on an automatic... Uh, setting. He has to he has to know the uh, the combination to set, to shut down the nuclear reactor that's making it work. And of course, all of the crew are passed out, so they can't give it to him. So that leaves only one crew member who's decided to stay at home sick. And to get the information from this crew member, Jeff dispatches Lady Penelope in probably the highlight of the episode. <laughs> she um, ventures out to his house. Um, briefly stopping to tend to someone who's been in a car accident, which, you know, shows the good Samaritan nature of International Rescue. You know, even though there's this massive thing going on, they still take their time to help out the little men. But they go over to this um, engineer's house while he's asleep, and um, she holds a gun to his head and remains mysterious and basically asks him, right, you're going to give me the shutdown sequence, or otherwise I'm sure, you know, otherwise I'll blow your head off. And so he does so reluctantly. And um, without knowing what the hell is going on, only finding out later on. And he does it under the impression that it may all be a dream, and he, and he just, uh, she's about to tranquilize him, where he says, Oh, you've got a lovely voice. <laughs> He's a married man. His wife is asleep in a separate bed in the same room. Well, I think that says a lot about his marriage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he must be going through some kind of midlife crisis or something, because, you know, if you see someone, they sleep in separate beds, that to me doesn't always mean things are particularly happy, especially in the bedroom. Some kind of basil and civil thing going on there. Yes, too true. But I mean, returning to uh, the uh, the rescue, um, I'll just say quickly that it was interesting that, the, uh, that Parker and Penelope attend to this uh, crash of an innocent man uh, whilst they're on their way, because it really uh, highlights a bit of a debate on whether, on like ethics, if you're to do with an altruistic organisation like International Rescue, should you really be altruistic to everyone, or is there something that's more important than others? Hmm. I think it's a good that, you know, it's good that they sh included that to show that they are willing to just, you know, step out of their way. Regardless of the situation, they are willing to step out of the way to help anyone. Mm. And what's also more about this uh, particular rescue is it may seem simple having to stop something before it wreaks havoc and destroys a, a dam, which will destroy the entire area. But first off, you have to uh, stop, uh, you know, stop the reactor, which Brains eventually does, and then uh, Scott immediately comes on next to a... Uh, 
to clear out the uh, fuel tanks, which would explode if the if the crab logger collapses in on the on the area, which it is about to do. So, Virgil and Brains eventually manage to fly away, literally with their uh, with their rocket packs that are just like the ones in the brink of um, edge of edge impact. Of impact. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, they, they managed to do it with all the elaborateness and uh, the quick thinking that you could do in a Thunderbird episode. Hmm. I mean, it's a very straightforward rescue. Um, pretty much the highlight is that one engineer, even at the end, which is a, <laughs> is a wonderful ending. He wakes up, he picks up the morning paper and reads that his information that he's given to this mysterious woman has been used to save thousands of lives. And he's like, so that's what the girl in my bedroom was about. And his wife picks up, what, what girl in the bedroom? What? what What's going on with this girl in the bedroom? What on earth have you been doing whilst I've been asleep? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I wonder why their marriage was on the rocks in the first yes, place. I do <laughs> A lack of trust between them. Or maybe the job was getting to uh, in 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 the way of his marriage, or so. Because interestingly, when they're trying to get the information out of him before they get his address, uh, Lady Vanellope and Parker go to what is the uh, nuclear base in uh, in 30 minutes afternoon. That's right, where the robots were. But uh, there's no robots here, just... Um... One security guard. And the way they uh, get the information out of him is quite uh, quite interesting, quite foreshadowing to the other Jerry Anderson films uh, we enjoyed in the future. Parker is using this, this kind of like ray gun, which we can only describe as being quite similar to like a, a Mysteron gun from Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons. Yeah, it, um, he fires this like sonic beam at the security guard and puts him into a somewhat hypnotic, paralytic state. Not too dissimilar from the methods that their arch-nemesis, the Hood, would use. Yeah, so maybe they've captured him, or maybe reformed him. Perhaps uh, perhaps they asked him to give them the key to his powers in exchange for teaching him to drive a car. <laughs> they're there saying, OK, you know, we'll, we, want your, we need your powers so that we can help save... I know we don't like each other, I know you've been after our secrets for ages, but it, can we use, if we use your powers, we'll teach you how to drive a car. No, I want your secrets! No, no mate. We'll teach you how to drive a car. Ugh. I mean, he's got enough wealth anyway. I mean, if he just knew how to drive a car, he'd have a much He's got a life. fucking temple! Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, he, uh, he's got enough money to buy a billion latex masks as well. Oh, dear me. Some people, eh? Some people just never learn to have oh. enough. It's quite funny when you think the whole thing that set off this chain of reactions was that you ate uh, something pretty bad at a very bad restaurant. Just some shitty food almost killed thousands of people. But anyway, yeah, Path of Destruction, relatively straightforward episode, not a whole lot to talk about, just a um, bizarre setup and an even funnier beep storyline involving Lady P and Parker. Yes, very interesting. I mean, it was quite quite fascinating, you know, in, in one of the episodes that, uh, I'm not sure if it was this one or the last one, but she says, have you called instead of, like, uh, work or pleasure? So is it hinted that they're having a bit of a romance? Yeah, there, there is often... This was explored in the last episode as well, the idea that maybe um, Lady Penelope and um, Jeff Tracy had a thing or have a thing that, you know, she's not willing to tell the point. It's a bit... You know, we don't know how old Lady Penelope is in comparison to Jeff Tracy. She's obviously... I reckon she's at least ten years younger than him. At mm. least. Well, you never know. I mean, you know, I know loads of people who go out with other people who are much older than them. You know, love is blind, as mm. they say. Kind of harkens to, um, you know, Batman's brief relationship with Batgirl as well. Wouldn't it be an interesting, like, uh, you know, storyline, perhaps, if it was revealed that maybe Lady Penelope was, in fact, the mother of one of the Tracy boys? That would be weird, because all of them, like, especially Alan and Scott have somehow, ex at some point or another, expressed some romantic interest in Lady Penelope. You like, briefly. Know. Well, you never know. That'd be fucked up. That'd be really messed up. Well, maybe that's another reason to have the bastard cry more down below. Maybe she's one of the mothers. <laughs> you never know. Jesus Christ. Well, stick around. There'll be more adultery in the next episode, probably. No, no, no luck. Uh, maybe. Uh, it's, um... I don't know. I don't know what the next one is. Well, that'll be interesting. We're going into one we can't remember, so that'll be quite funny. Mm. F.A.B. F.A.B.